Great. All right. Thanks uh, for that great introduction. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you about distributed tracing and the struggle that some of you may be aware of and I guess all of you are going to experience at some point. Uh, real quick, uh, who remembers what they were doing in March of 2014? Most people don't. Okay, one person. All right, it doesn't matter. We're not going to walk through the whole room. But in any case, for me, March of 2014 was when I started working on monitoring observability. Uh, I started working at a company that I'm sure a lot of you know that was working on commoditizing APM for the masses. Uh, and since then, I've had the fortune of working for a bunch of vendors that you love and some vendors that you probably less love, um, all focused on sort of that goal of providing a better developer experience, particularly around incidents as well as monitoring and observability. Uh, so, you know, closing in on nine years later, uh, here I am talking about uh, distributed tracing, which there is this great white hope of uh, cloud native observability in particular. So, time for an awkward segue, quite literally. Um, so, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, the segue was revealed to the world around the time that a bunch of us were still worried about Y2K. Uh, there's a lot of hype and fanfare, and really it was meant to change the world. If you believed every bit of hype and media that you saw out there, uh, you know things like the way that we move, the way that our uh, towns and cities were going to be built was all going to be affected by this brand new product and technology. Lots of flashy features. Um, Steve Jobs himself even said that it was going to be just as important as the personal computer, which is a uh, pretty high praise from from someone who had a pretty big impact on, I'm sure, all of us here. But as you may have guessed from the tombstone, the Segway ended up uh, wrapping up its manufacturing in 2020 due to really a lack of adoption and a lack of impact, uh, particularly on all the things that it was hyped up about. And uh, infamously, uh, the owner of Segway unfortunately literally rode one of these off a cliff in 2010 uh, to his unfortunate early demise. So chances are, if you're here, you've probably seen or heard some issues around uh, the use of distributed tracing, uh, and much in sort of the same way that the Segway is, you know, was really definitely didn't live up to its hype, um, there's definitely a potential for distributed tracing to not have the impact that we all hope that it's going to have, particularly if we keep treating it the way that uh, we have up until now. As we've gone from monoliths and VMs to microservices and containers, our engineering teams have really struggled with uh, the amount of data, the complexity of the observability problems that they're dealing with, and you know, distributed tracing is sort of generally seen as this, okay, cool, for distributed environments, we've got distributed tracing, makes sense, it's all in the name. Really just need to load in some, some tracing instrumentation, load up a tracing backend, and you know, throw as many complex analytical features of the problem as possible. But despite all of these huge investments, both in the open source community, Bartek covered uh, some of those earlier, as well as on the vendor side, distributed tracing really runs a risk of passing into irrelevance and really um, being used as a cautionary anecdote in some future talk by someone, probably not me, uh, much like I'm using the segue today in these particular slides. So I want to talk a little bit about the kinds of problems that our engineering teams are facing uh, in using distributed tracing. But importantly, we really need to look at the organizational problems that we're seeing, not just the technical problems, not just the, hey, what can I build you know, a new query engine? What can I new build um, a new dashboarding widget to try and solve? Because that's really the, the, the heart of what we need to be able to look at when we look at building and operating developer tools. So the story that I've heard time and time again um, when talking to many organizations, large and small, about their use of distributed tracing, is that you know, any team who goes and implements this stuff really runs into uh, a bunch of problems that, that really center around adoption. The adoption never really hits that critical mass, and it starts to fall off rapidly after day one, right? It's the most valuable that it ever gets, the most uh, engaged that it ever gets in day one, it starts to fall off. And a lot of it tends to focus on four key problems, four key themes that I hear continually. The tools are really only useful for power users. You know, the smartest, the brightest, the, the most long tenured engineers are the ones who can operate these tools. Um, they know the technology, they know the data set, they know the architecture, and they can make use of it. But oftentimes they're the bottleneck for the rest of their organization. And the, part of the thing is that um, it's not easy to go into this. Oftentimes tracing tooling is sort of slapped on on top of everything else that's happening. It's not purposeful in the way that we're using it. I've heard continually that engineers really lack trust in what's going on with tracing, oftentimes because of really heavy sampling. 
because of the cost, because of the strain on the system, because of storage and, and so on. And ultimately, because you're so uh, required to rely on what everyone else is doing with their tracing instrumentation, there's no real collective or singular ownership around the instrumentation and data collection. So you run into issues where you really need data from someone else and they haven't done their instrumentation and vice versa. And this ends up with this sort of sorry state of affairs where you know, tracing for those who have invested heavily and have utilized it for a period of time really see it as a high promise, high effort, but sort of low outcome, low value uh, sort of story that they've, they've spent this time and effort on. So how do we move away from sort of that potential future of the, the lonely little segue in the desert lost? Um, and how do we think about really taking a step back and moving away from the sort of features and functions and all that sort of like technical focus that we've really applied uh, to distributed tracing up until now and really think about the outcomes and think about, well, how do we be purposeful about this? There's no real silver bullets. I'm not like up here to say, hey, you know, Chronosphere or anything else is about to announce some new magic feature. There's really making sure that we start thinking about this properly, particularly as a, a mass number of organizations are going to start adopting distributed tracing. So let's think about maybe the, the number one thing that most people think about when they think about the use of tracing is sort of instance and responding to alerts. So you know, there's going to be lots of different variations of this diagram, but in terms of what I hear continually from, from organizations, how are they using it today? As I said, a lot of the times distributed tracing sort of gets slapped on existing processes, but particularly as you've moved into more complex architectures, more microservices, more containers, more cloud native, you've got all these alerts going off. Everyone has alerts going off, um, but it sort of leads into this your big question puddle of like, okay, where do we look? Who's responsible? How many teams do we go get involved? Um, maybe you look at logging first, maybe you look at your legacy APM first, maybe you look at metrics dashboards first, but almost no one looks at distributed tracing first. I'm not necessarily saying that you should, but oftentimes distributed tracing is used by that, you know, one you know, principal engineer at the back of the room going, wait, I have a theory. I bet I could get Jaeger to, to work through this. Um, so, and it leads to the outcomes you see at the bottom, reduced velocity, high frustration, poor customer experiences, all those kinds of bad things that, you know, ultimately make us feel bad and, and really just make us question why are we doing this. So if we take another step back and think less about the, uh, the incident workflow and more a little bit about, well, what should it actually do for us? And think about, well, we had all of this sort of microservices complexity. We deliberately added this. Why? We did this because engineers should be able to go and move uh, and operate independently of each other, sort of think about your individual team, um, think about um, your, uh, your coordination, um, only one tier away from you, but you've introduced all this additional complexity and now you really can't handle it. So if we think about distributed tracing as the answer to like, well, can we scale back that complexity? Um, can we uh, really make it so that a human being can think about the where of what's going on and then start applying all the other tools that we've, we've used before? It's not about distributed tracing replacing everything, but it's making uh, the, the haystack that we've got to dig into a little smaller. Then we can have sort of a much more focused use of it and we can think about, okay, we can be purposeful as how we use it in those in incidents and, and other use cases. So if we think about a slightly nicer diagram, you've got your alerts, those alerts, they can lead into dashboards, let you know about things like your symptoms, justify your investigation, uh, your symptoms and your impact. You can use distributed tracing to figure out where, uh, so you can go and narrow that scope, the, the size of that haystack. You can better use your logging, your APM, your metrics, whatever it is, events, exceptions, all those wonderful things that we want to use, but we also need to use and feed it back into things. So. For example, everyone focuses on SLOs. Tracing is a great data set to be able to improve our SLOs. It's a great data set to be able to help illustrate what symptoms we're having and the impact that we're having on um, our customers. And so being able to sort of tie this together and make it a loop means that you don't have that, oh, distributed tracing is only as valuable as it was on day one type situation. So ultimately, really quickly, what we want to do is drive the adoption and realize the value of distributed tracing. But to do so, we need to be purposeful about what we're doing. We can't just, you know, throw up uh, a distributed tracing backend and have one engineer who's really good at fiddling around with advanced query language. We need to integrate in workflows. 
We need to focus on showing where problems exist because that's allowing us to negate the complexity we introduced purposefully into this situation and make sure it's useful for every engineer. It was really quick, uh, but just wanted to highlight that Chronosphere here is at uh, booth G15 as well as out there in the corridor. Uh, we've got a fun bunch of little enticements for you to come talk to us. Um, and obviously, if you disagree with any of this, feel free to come hit me up. Thanks. Thank you.